All right, so for our final presentation for the day here at Big Talk from Small Libraries 2016, um, we have Diane Connery. She is um, south of here in Texas, uh, Pottsboro Area Public Library. Uh, topic or title of presentation, Flip the Script, Changing the Direction of the Library. Um, this is a uh, presentation about uh, making a big change to your library and what you've been doing and changing the focus uh, to, to, you know, bring in some new things. So I will just uh, let you go ahead, Diane, and tell us about how you um, accomplish that at your library. Okay, Krista, thanks very much. And just jump in if my sound's not good or something. But um, no, You're sounding great. <laughs> okay, I will paint the picture by telling you I'm sitting here in an evening gown, which isn't an everyday occurrence around here. Uh, but I've got a Chamber of Commerce banquet to go to after that, <laughs> after this. And I think that just speaks to the variety of things we do. I started this morning at 8 o'clock. We had a um, coffee with the mayor where the community members can come talk to the mayor here at the library. And then we had a Head Start come for a parenting class and a variety of things today. And now this and then on to... A chamber banquet. Oh, I wish I had known I would have done video for your session. You dressed up for us. <laughs> there may be some, there are, are many people watching from home could be sitting there in their pajamas. <laughs> it's a total other extreme. <laughs> yeah, just picture me with a tiara on and you'll have an accurate picture. Um, and I do want to start by saying uh, what a great opportunity this is for sharing ideas. I love being with other librarians and talking about what's going on in their places. And I've implemented several ideas that I've gotten in previous years. There was uh, someone a couple years ago who talked about their outdoor space and making the outdoor welcoming, and we've tried to emulate that. And so I just want to say, here's my disclaimer. Your mileage may vary um, because all of our libraries do have things in common but are also very different. I'm sharing my experience and probably everything won't translate, but I hope maybe something will spark an idea that you can adapt to your setting. And so I came to this small town, moved from the big city to this small town six years ago and got involved with the uh, board of directors for the library after about a, a year. I had no interest in really getting involved. I just wanted to live at the lake and um, have scenery. But within a year, I got involved on the board. Um, and we were at what I now see was a very fortunate point in time. And that was the, these factors coming together. We were running out of money. There was no um, city support for us, no taxpayer money coming to us. And there was a group of volunteers who had done amazing things, but they were either aging out or burning out, and it was looking pretty hopeless. And so um, I come from a, a background as an entrepreneur and not a, not a background in libraries. That kind of environment gave us the opportunity to explore, to experiment. There was no fear of failure because we were failing already. And so I came on uh, the board, and then about a year ago, I transitioned to the director position. And so just to tell you a little bit about um, Pottsboro, to, to paint the picture for you, it's a town of about uh, 2,000 people, and then outside of city limits, our service area is about 3,300. And uh, it's a lake community, so it's a very um, split community. There are people who have lived in this rural area for you know, generations, but there are also a lot of professional retirees who come here from Dallas. We're about an hour and a half north of Dallas. And um, until 2010, it was a completely volunteer organization, which just blew my mind that that could happen. Um, but then as volunteers were dwindling, we discovered that we really needed to hire a half-time librarian to be here. And so all the money that friends had been 
saving over the years started going to that uh, librarian position. And uh, this past year, our annual budget's $24,719. And um, at early on, there was no tax money. And then at some point, um, like 2010, the city started putting in a little, little money. And from there, have been increasing their commitment. Um, 2010 was $4,000 a year. 2010 to 2012, they were putting in $14,000 a year. And I will add to that how we've made these ha happen is through grant writing. Um, we've gotten, probably in the last two years, about $150,000 worth of grants. So when I got involved, we were preparing to, sh to shut down. Every board, mem board meeting was just this discussion of how much money do we have left? How many more months can we keep going until we have to close? And I can't tell you how fun those meetings were. <laughs> it was They were such a downer, um, if you can imagine. So it, there were these committed volunteers who had made things happen but they were losing interest, and um, nobody saw a way out of it. Yet, um, there were discussions about how important a library is to a community. And there were a lot of people who felt like whether or not anybody in the community was using the library, that out of principle, a town should, should have one. And um, I came into it saying, okay, now that we have hired this part-time director or librarian and money is dwindling, long-term the library cannot sustain salaries just based on, on fundraising. And so the only way I could see us surviving long-term would be if we could get some kind of sustainable income stream for that paid staff. So they had been doing fundraisers, and we started looking at, okay, what else can we do? And the first thoughts were, let's keep doing the things we have been doing, but let's do them better. Let's do them harder. We've been doing um, flower sales. Well, let's advertise more. Um, we were spending so much time on fundraising that um, we weren't really offering anything that people valued. It was all about let, let's raise some money and then save that money um, in case of a rainy day. And the rainy day had really come. <laughs> so uh, before my time here, I think the fundraisers had been very traditional. Uh, flower sales, bake sales, dinner dances, uh, poetry reading. And um, we started looking at that and said, well, let's Let's do something fun. And um, in addition to that, at the same time, we were looking at how do we save money. So volunteers were taking turns cleaning, cleaning the bathrooms. We got rid of a fax line. And um, one of the ways that we then attempted to make things fun is we bring a trivia night once a year. And, um, I experienced it, went to Tulsa and saw the high school Bishop Kelly that put on a, a trivia fundraiser every year. They actually sell out two gyms in 24 hours, 1,200 seats. They do it every year, and it's fairly simple to put on. In their case, they actually have one gym is for serious people who want quiet and another gym for people who are having fun and are building uh, pyramids on their table, uh, beer cans and that kind of stuff. So we looked at fundraising and we realized there's a hierarchy of fundraising. The lowest level of fundraising is events. Now that's it's not to say don't do them because we, we do some of them. We cut way back and we try to make them fun. But events are the lowest level. Then above that you have grants and above that, you have gifts. And that's where your, your larger um, funds are going to come from and people who really care about the library. Because a lot of times, if you're doing events, 
if you don't have the event one time, nobody's giving you money. And so we were building relationships to, um, we established an annual appeal so that people just write us a check now once a year, and that's, that's lovely. But we have continued this trivia picture is last weekend. Um, the people in the community have actually demanded that we keep doing that because they have so much fun. Uh, so, as we were looking and considering the, the transition, uh, I, I stumbled upon something I call the shrimp tail principle. We were looking for ideas. How can we get different people into the library, people who have never used us before? And so one of the discussion points is, well, we do have a meeting room. It's not separate from the library, so it could only be used off library hours. But what if we made that available to community members um, to use? And so started a series of meetings where rules and policies and forms were discussed ad nauseum. And so it was like, well, if somebody's going to use it, we need to have this thing that they sign and these rules posted in the kitchen, and that's where shrimp tail comes from. Because one of the points that was decided upon was if people were using the library, they couldn't have shrimp because somebody had worked in a library once that shrimp tails went down the drain and it smelled bad. So picture all of this no, 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 and lots of time and energy put into this. After all of that, I think in the following year, two years, maybe two people used the library. So what I'm saying is we were spending our time in the wrong places, not focusing on the big picture. And we really try to consider now, are you spending your time on the most important things? And what that brought us to, if you're a fan of Seinfeld, um, <laughs> there was a time when George decided to flip the script, that everything he had been doing in his life was wrong, was not working, and what he decided to do is whatever he felt like doing, he would do the opposite. And so th this scene was he was in a restaurant, saw a beautiful woman, walked up to her and said, my name's George, I'm unemployed, and I live with my parents. And sure enough, she was interested. And so that's kind of what we were looking at. Um, if we stopped spending all our time on fundraising policies and started focusing on what the community wanted, we had nothing to lose. And so knowing that the only way we were going to survive was to establish a steady income stream, the, the overarching principle became what will make this place so important to the community that there would be rioting in the streets if we had to close. I'm picturing like people with pitchforks going to City Hall. I wanted the place to be packed and for people to feel like we were a part of the community. And so we started thinking big. Um, we said what we want, even though our town is small and has a very small tax base, what we want is for the city to take us over. And, and I know that's a double-edged sword because the reason we had so much freedom to experiment was because there was not a lot of bureaucracy. Um, we were could beta test every, everything. So we said, okay, we want the city to know we're good partners. Um, we applied, and I've got a woman here, a volunteer who writes grants, and she's just fabulous. She wrote a, a grant application to Outside the Box, and we were we got the award. Twenty libraries in the U.S. and only one in Texas got the award, and we were one of them. Um, and the other piece of it is, I know librarians tend to be can tend to be very frugal, but I wanted to go at it again from flipping the script. What if we spent money on professionals? Um, that, that we didn't try to nickel and dime, but we paid professionals to come up with a website and a logo. And um, what I have found with that is, yes, we have paid some money. Luckily, we got money through grants. But they have given us back value for that. And also, in most cases, have been very um, generous with giving us time 
after the paid work was over because we didn't want to feel like we were always coming to people with our hands out. Didn't want to just make do, we wanted something special. Now, here, here's a warning for you. Um, and, and I did learn this at an ARSL conference. If people aren't mad at you, you're not doing enough. So get comfortable with that. Um, people are going to be mad if you're changing the status quo. And I remember in the beginning uh, when I got involved, everybody was so excited. And, and I actually talked to uh, um, somebody at the state library and told her that. And I remember she sounded hesitant, like, well, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> but what I found out is um, as changes occurred, people started making little comments kind of out of the side of their mouth. And it came to a head when we had a, a semi-truck pull up in the, the driveway to take away books to Better World Books. Um, we had had, when I came on, we had 14,000 books in the library. We're required to have 7,500. And um, right now, that's what we have, about $7,500 uh, books. And so through talking to the state, they advised us don't have any shelf more than 75% full. We looked at the circulation records, and literally, we had hundreds, thousands of books that hadn't been checked out in 10 years or more. But people were mad because they felt like these books had a value whether or not they were being checked out. And in our case, because we're, we have such small square footage, we are not in a position to be a book museum, to be an archive of books. We have to think about what will really um, circulate. And the other part of people getting mad is that innovation is about it's about what you give up. It's just about as much about what you discontinue as what you create. And so we had looked at things like, oh, these wonderful, sweet volunteers had run summer reading forever, um, and everybody was kind of grumbling about how it wasn't keeping up with the times, but nobody wanted to hurt their feelings. And the bigger vision is, do you want the library to survive or not? And clearly what we had been doing wasn't working. So um, sometimes people got mad with me. Now, the vision part of it, I think, is, is having somebody or several somebodies um, involved with the planning who have this uh, set a direction, create a common goal to strive for. You've got to have that clear vision, and like ours was, let's get a sustainable income stream. You've got to have that clear vision before you can share it with anyone else. Don't get bogged down in the minutia. Um, we had a strategic planning meeting, and a big focus of that, and this was back in 2014, was the Pew Institute. And it talked about what people value in libraries, and niches that libraries can fill that are currently unfilled in society. And so we really try to focus on big picture and not get it bogged down. I think one of the things that I have learned and probably learned too slowly was the importance of relationship building. And that has been key, is, is looking at um, who in the community we can work with and bringing other people together. Um, it, it, and it, this came from Pew Institute. One of the ideas was the library as a platform. It's networks of people creating something. And for instance, one of the things that we're working on is building a community garden. And that has brought in a Rotary, Visions of Sugar Plums, which is a food bank for um, lower income children in the area and churches and and by us all working together it, we're really making progress and um, the relationship building turning outwards I think that was helpful in the sense of 
finding like-minded people to work with you is so energizing. I don't know if you have this in your library, but we had some people here that when I drive up to the building and see their cars, it was just draining because there were certain people who were negative, didn't like the new ideas, but when we started getting all this excitement from outside, those internal naysayers had a hard time denying the su success that we were experiencing, the community support. They still tried and they, they still had their opinions, but um, I think that propelled us to levels we could have never gone. And last spring we attended the uh, Harwood Institute training about turning outwards and finding out what your community wants and that's just been key. One of the biggest surprises I have experienced is when you're open to opportunities, to possibilities, um, how one thing leads to the next. So I'm a big proponent in staying flexible, um, not getting too tied into one thing but being light on your feet. And I'll give you just a couple little examples. Um, we had a woman who came in last week and I told her she's my guardian angel. Um, she retired here from Dallas a few months ago, had sold her multi-million dollar software company in Dallas, never wants to work again, but is now living here at the lake and wants to continue to stay involved with the community and give back. So she had uh, computers that she wanted to get rid of and she had called our volunteer fire department. They had just purchased new computers so they told her they couldn't use them. And by virtue of them telling her no, she showed up here and is now working with us in incredible ways. I am so excited. Strategic plans. Um, she's awesome. And, and so it was about saying yes and just following things to see where they lead. Um, we also did, we had early on an involvement with Austin College and Austin College is a, a liberal arts school here and um, they have provided so many opportunities for us. Every summer now they provide grant writers for us um, to work on our projects. We've been, their, one of their marketing professors uses us as their, their semester long project. Their science outreach person has done programming for us. So it really is about just saying yes to things and seeing where they lead. Strategic decisions, any time that we can um, make a decision, we, we like to weigh, uh, is, is there one option that would help us more than another? For instance, um, we got a Best Buy grant for $9,500, which made, us po made it possible to establish a teen digital media program. So we were teaching the teens how to use Photoshop and um, Premiere Pro for video editing. We had DSLR cameras and we used that grant. It also included um, to hire a trainer and we hired one of the news producers from the local TV station. We could have hired other people but by hiring her she ended up getting uh, media coverage for us uh, a lot of times. It was very valuable. And um, through that decision, actually one of the teens who participated ended up um, offering to do a program for us, Lego racing. He coordinated a Lego racing program for kids. He videotaped the, the event and then submitted that, we submitted that to YALSA, won a national award for that video. As part of the award, we were given a book called Consult, Console Wars about video games. And I tweeted a picture of a kid who checked the book out and loved it, and the author responded. So then it became a back and forth with the author who offered to do a Skype session for us. So it, it was just one thing leads to another, so watch for those opportunities. Um, 
the senior center meets here. Now, before 2010, there were complaints about that, <laughs> and believe it or not, one of the complaints was they used too much toilet paper, and they're not paying us for this space, um, and it's using our utilities. But we started looking at it strategically. Who cares if they're not paying us for toilet paper? It is more important to get those people in the building. And then when we're grant writing, we're talking about this population we're serving in our building. And so those things give us traction. I also, um, and I think I heard that on, on this webinar, a couple of years ago is to be sure to attend all the city council meetings. I have sort of wormed my way in, so now I speak monthly at the, the city council meetings. Here's, I, I like digital media, so this is an example of, of something that's coming up. Um, because of the Photoshop training the teams have had and, and the software we've bought, um, and follow on step to that we started thinking about is having people come here to have holiday photos made and then we can help customize their holiday photos for them. And we've got a photo scanner, we've got a volunteer photographer, and um, we feel like this is a way to bring in people who have not used the library before. And so it's just about exciting possibilities and everything's a beta test. Some of the things just flops horribly. I, I'm still embarrassed to tell you that um, we did an outdoor movie several years ago. It was catching fire. We had movie snacks. It should have been fabulous. I advertised it for months and 10 people came. And so that was painful for how much money we had spent on it. Um, but what I recognized is we had not built our base enough. We hadn't been attracting um, the teams enough at that point to actually be able to count on them coming to the event. Also, just as an aside, this is a digital board that we have in the front of our library that we use for library advertising. The back of the library, we have a community digital sign, and um, area nonprofits can advertise on that. And again, we will provide the training they need. And it is pretty darn simple if you're using um, Canva, something like that. Um, and in small towns, it's hard to get the word out about things. We have. Our newspaper is only weekly, so most of the things are old news by the time it comes out. And so that's drawn nonprofits to our library to learn how to create their own promotional materials, things that have impact. And um, I, I, that was just a way of one of those um, following opportunities because from that, uh, one of the youth shelters who had lost a huge grant ask us if we come to the youth shelter, make a video for them, and uh, to help them with their fundraising efforts. We did that. They took that video out into the community and were able to raise a lot of money. And at the same time, they were talking to people in the community that we would have never been talking to. So it, it spread the word about us. I always like things that create buzz, like if I was a newspaper, what would I want to cover? And um, we have remodeled, but <laughs> this picture is for summer reading, we had um, many therapy horses come. And because I knew we were replacing the carpet soon, we let the horses in the library. So that's just one of the horses um, cruising the internet there. And um, so it, these are also things in grant applications that we look like, what will stand out? What's going to pop when we're either submitting it for um, a grant or an award or press? What kind of things attract media attention? I always like humor. Um, <laughs> Uh, try, to, try to incorporate this on Facebook page and just in the experience 
of being at the library. We actually have um, several volunteers and board members uh, who live out of town and they've said the only reason that they stay on our boards is because they enjoy the experience and um, like the other people that they're working with and, and the energy of it. And so actually the treasure of our board is lives in a, a different community but is awesome. We've done things like um, in the town parade, we did a book cart drill team, which was a lot of fun. And um, when we did our remodel, I, I noticed I got an email from the uh, consultant that she looked forward to getting emails from me just because there was always something fun in there to read. And as a result, she ended up donating the book carts to us for the for the parade, which was awesome. So I think things um, that have led to progress, and there is no end to this. It's a constantly <laughs> changing animal, which I love. Um, but if you've ever been to improv, um, it, one of the keys of making improv work is to say yes and. So whatever one person says, it, it's you build on that. You accept it, take it, and build on it. Um, if you're if you're saying no, it's cutting off a lot of people who might want to get involved and things that would work in the future. And I think it's just um, I, I we don't collaborate on everything. Actually, we kind of a lot of us work in silos. We have our particular um, areas of interest or passions and for the most part on those kinds of things people do their do their own thing they've been vetted we trust them and we give them the freedom freedom to do what they want and um, just support that now I mean you've got to be careful with that and there's definitely a, a balance with that um, but that's what we have found to work for us is um, to, to say yes, and fortunately, our town has um, been full of people who have said yes, and uh, that we now are getting twenty four, twenty seven thousand dollars a year from the city. And when we look back, it was four thousand dollars, you know, two thousand and ten, and you know, nothing for years before that. And this is in a time of a lot of library budgets being cut and people questioning the value of libraries. Um, but we were looking at giving people something they value. When I was first involved here, we were not a kid-friendly library. Kids, frankly, were not welcome here. And um, it was a lot of dusty, dusty old books and most of them were not being checked out but it was kind of a click of people who had run the library for a while and, and were comfortable with the way things were while at the same time wringing their hands over what's going to happen we're going to close. Um, it, it's a very quiet place. Now we are a, a no shushing library. We're basically one big room. I would love eventually to have another place with a private um, meeting room and some study rooms, but um, right now it's not about walking in and seeing a bunch of signs that say no cell phones, you know, no, no this, no that. It, it's a positive place to, to be involved. We definitely found money followed money. Um, as things improved, it, funders would look at that and people in the community would look at that and be willing to give us more money. Um, one of the, the most exciting things that we had last year, um, the Talker Foundation had very generously um, given us a budget to remodel the library and we made this in, it's so unexpected, we made this into the wildest, most modern looking place when you walk in the door. Um, outside, it's still pretty much 1960s post office, but you walk in the door and kind of do a double take. And luckily we have 
local artist who pitched in and picked colors for the walls like begonia and thistle and um, things that looked crazy to me, but it all came together. So um, we had an open house for the remodeling, and that day two different people called me from the community and offered to pay for new lighting for the library, which um, then it was like, hold please, I've got another line who's offering me money for, for lighting, and that ended up being about $8,000. And so people like being part of something successful and exciting. And um, we always, you know, make notes of these things for our grants that we can talk about what's happening and, and what's, um, we, lots of media to show that, that we're getting attention, which a lot of times funders want that. They want to see that you can help um, let people know about what they've donated. And I will say um, imperfect action is an important um, <laughs> covenant tab. And it's easy for me because I'm not a perfectionist. Um, done is better than perfect. It, and we have built an atmosphere here of um, experimentation. We're not worried about failing with things. Again, because we have that freedom of, well, we would have been closed by now anyway. But um, what we found is sometimes people want to research and make sure everything is perfect before they do anything. And so we've decided to, we've got an idea, let's try it. And so a lot of that goes on and we, we don't blame. When something goes wrong, it's a learning experience and we take it and, and move on with it. People are drawn to success. We've got, I, it, our, our numbers have just exploded. The numbers of, of patrons, of volunteers. Volunteers want to be part of something that's positive and fun. And when I go back in my mind to those early meetings we had where people were so woe is me and what are we going to do, it's no wonder that people were jumping ship. I mean, that would just wasn't a, a place that you wanted to, to spend your time working. And so people like upbeat and positive, and that's helped us in a, in a lot of ways. So uh, I just kind of want to reiterate, stay in light on your feet. Don't get too attached to, to anything, but focus on the main thing. I think um, that's what what I've seen is that it's just keeping the big picture in mind. That's helped me when people have gotten mad um, because I'm confident based on what I've seen happening that we are headed in the right direction. And um, I just, I, every day is exciting and something new around here. And I think we're all in a very fortunate time to be in this transformational stage for libraries. It's, you know, if we were starting with a clean slate, what would a library be? And, and so we are pushing those boundaries. And, and sometimes I think we're coming up with creative, awesome stuff and, um, when I get together with other librarians, I hear that it's, oh, we did that three years ago. So, you know, it, it's all about just, um, I think, the passion for what you're doing, connecting with people, and living in the yes. So if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. My contact information is up on the screen. Mm -hmm. And um, if you come up with something afterwards, I'll, I'll be happy to get back with you. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Diane. Um, yes, every library is at a different stage in their growth, change, development, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, everybody's, you know, learning new things, coming up with new things. And don't worry about where you are if you hear somebody doing something and uh, they've done it already. You may have the first idea. You never know. Um, <laughs> we do have some great, some questions that did come in. Yes. Um, Let's see what do we got here. 
Uh, oh, some people are just saying they've, um, someone else has also started researching a community garden, and I know some other libraries have been doing that, I've heard of, and someone else says they're excited when they get 10 teens to come to an event, um, in regards, in reference to when you said you only got 10 people to come to one of your movies, yes. uh, but it, it, it's going to vary from community to community. Um, Ah, I had a question. The Lego races. I've heard about Lego clubs and Lego building and Mindstorm. What what are Lego races? They ended up uh, just we taped on the carpet a starting uh, line and an ending line, and so they would push their cards cars. Their hands couldn't go past the starting line, and whoever reached the ending tape the fastest um, won the race. So when they came in, we had um, Legos all over the place on tables and gave them, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes, an hour to build the Legos, and then the races started. And the team had it arranged in heats and was great about building excitement throughout the day. So they had to build their own car that could be like hopefully the fastest. <laughs> yes. yes. It was. It wasn't. And this would be something that'd be important. So is it on carpet or on solid or flat floor? It was. I'm trying to think. At the time, it was carpet. It ah. was that carpet that the horses had been walking around on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because that would affect your speed as well. What the what the. Uh... <laughs> type of terrain that you're trying to go across and those horses that yeah, that was a great thing that's something I'm sure many libraries have never thought about in in planning an event well we're replacing this anyway so why not destroy it with a, 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 a previous uh, program or an event sure let the horses in <laughs> yes well and and somebody had even talked about having a like a red Kool-Aid and spaghetti party like oh, who my. cares <laughs> <laughs> which normally would be most likely you try. I know you said don't say no and be, but maybe banned <laughs> from the library. Yes. <laughs> and someone else did comment about that. They once had llamas in their library for their open house, and like you said, the pictures were a hit. They got people's attention. They caught their eyes. They, um, yeah, it's it's you know creating a buzz, like you said. Um, and a couple of people want to know. Um, can you explain what is a book cart drill team? That, you know, you said you guys did it, and I know I've their libraries have done that, but there are still some people that have not heard of it. Can you explain what that is? Do you have any pictures yeah, just, of that or anything? Just briefly, and feel free. I think if you Google book cart drill team, you'll you'll mm -hmm. see what it is. But we had uh, the town parade, um, annual parade, is a year long. I mean, a year long. A mile long, and so we choreographed these moves, and um, there were ten of us, I think, and we would twirl around each other with the book carts and um, serpentine in and out, and we ha made up little songs we would sing, like I like big books and I cannot lie, and <laughs> we had a <laughs> a little boombox playing, so it was just. Again, it was like, okay, we are fighting so hard against, um, I think, maybe the stereotype of libraries in general, but in this town, what our library had been. So we really had to go out of our way to say, we are not that library anymore. Mm -hmm. Change your image, absolutely. Um, it's similar to, like, um, synchronized swimming, but... Um, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, obviously on land, <laughs> and with the book <laughs> carts, and uh, yeah, going. Around. There's actually some. There's at, at some ALAs they used to, and I'm honestly, I, I, I embarrassed to say I don't know. There would be competitions um, at ALA American Library Association conference, um, book cart drill team competitions, and um, Demco provided uh, trophies, a gold, silver, and bronze book carts that were your your first, second, and third place winners <laughs> received actually book trucks. <laughs> In gold, silver, and bronze for the competition is they're a lot of fun. Yes, so you're you're choreographing music and promoting the library and maybe whatever if you do it. So I know some people do it every year in their annual parade, promoting them. Maybe that summer's summer reading program or some new event or something new uh, that has to do with the library. Very fun. Um, hmm. Some uh, here's a question. Someone says we have a great elder, elderly patronage, but how do we draw in the next generations, the youngers, without losing our seniors? Well, okay, a couple things come to mind. Um, number one, a lot of our um, 
programming is based on the time of day. So the seniors would be here in the morning, um, but by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they are not here anymore. So a lot of it for us falls in those kind of timelines. And we do things in um, outside of operating hours as well if we want special programs. But it, it has been this, um, uh, I guess, an introduction to some people. We're no shushing library, so it may not be as quiet as, as you expected. But the other thing we've done are some intergenerational activities. Uh, we had an after-school club, or it's Pottsboro Kids Club. They've come and played dominoes and, and built puzzles with the seniors. So. The, the seniors, after a couple hours, were had had enough of it, <laughs> but they enjoyed it for a, for a while, and and that was a great photo op for again for good pictures of, you know, here are these people sitting around playing dominoes, and two of them are eight year old boys, and two of them are, you know, seventy five year old men. That's that's an interesting way to do it. Yeah, make them make them play nice together. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, and at different times of day, yeah, that's obviously. They don't have to be there. And I know you, you did mention that your building is just one big room, correct? Yes. So that would be something definitely you'd want to try and think. You can't say they're in this meeting room, they're in this side of the library because eh, it's not really logistically even available, yeah. Right, not yet. Yeah. Um, do you have any photos of your remodeled? Um, the library? Did you? I didn't, wasn't sure if any of the pictures here were showed any of that. The remodeled library interior. I, they are not there, but I can. If it works, I can upload them when I, we upload the the PowerPoint and include some of those. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. If you have them, and there may be places online people can see them or so. Um, great. Anybody else have any questions? Anything else you want to? ask of Diane before we wrap it up. We do have just a couple of I'm trying to bring it back up here. Comments here. Um, someone says we're only a year old and really needed to hear what you said. Thank you so much. This is great. Um, and someone else said about your, your failures. You had mentioned earlier that you know think, that things that didn't work out. Um, and you did show exactly what this person commented about the, earlier on that you sh should not be embarrassed about failures because you use the you and the library use them as learning experiences and don't give up. And you did mention that. And I think that's been a, a theme throughout a lot of the things that we've heard about today not everything's gonna work right, right and stick with it try something else try a different way maybe if a someone said if he if your movie day movie night didn't work don't just say no more movie nights say well what could we do differently let's try right. it again I mean it movies are popular obviously <laughs> there's <laughs> got to be a way to to get in, you know, connect with what our community, you know, wants or connect with how we can promote to them. Yes, and I, looking back, I think that was my um, being naive is my first thought, like with the Best Buy grant, $9,500 worth of GoPro cameras and all this, that if I buy this, people will be knocking down our doors to get in here. I had not accounted for how um, entrenched the, the image of the library was. And I and now I've really spent, you know, 18 months, two years trying to um, get the word out about we're not what you think. We're unexpected. Mm -hmm. And that may be something that some other libraries are encountering too, and you might not realize that there's this preconceived notion that you hadn't realized. Yes. And, you know, take a look at that and... A lot of I know a lot of people talk about um, go to go where your non-users are. Ask your non-users what do they want from the library. That may be who you should be work, reach, reaching out to. Mm -hmm. Well, and the community conversations were terrific for that. That was a mm -hmm. three or four month process where we got we really went out of our way to invite. Um, veterans and people from all parts of the community, a wide demographic, kids, people who had lived here for, you know, generations, all that, to bring them together and 
um, ask them questions about what's important to you, what are your aspirations for this community, and the conversation was not based at all on the library, and I told them up front, nothing may come of this for the library. This is just us wanting to know about the community. And in fact, after we um, summarized at the end of the process all the, um, the, all the responses, the things that emerged were definitely things that we are taking action on now. It is a place for the library. Mm -hmm. um, so more work to be done. Yes. Um, we have one final question that I'll at let you answer. Someone wants to know, where do you find out about these grants? Where did you find the grants that you applied for? How do you find grants well, out there? Yeah, a, a lot, I used to say as the queen of Google, I, I just <laughs> would spend a lot of time on, on the internet um, looking for things, but uh, through various, I've taken some grant training and um, our Austin College has a, a very expensive grant database that you can mm -hmm. go in, and uh, so other colleges have this, and um, you go in and with search terms and say, you know, grant outdoor movies library, just and and see what you come up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of databases and resources like that. Yeah, um, use Google. It's it's it it's useful. It works. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Diane. That was great. Very good. Very good wrap up for um, for our big talk from small libraries today. I think giving a lot of good inspiration to everyone who's here. Well, thank you for having me, and I'll. Um go adjust my tiara and get off to the chamber banquet. <laughs> yes, do have a wonderful time. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to just get back to my screen here. And okay. So that does wrap it up. That is our final presentation for today. Back it up wraps up for a big talk from Small Libraries 2016. Thank you to all of our great speakers. Everyone was wonderful, awesome ideas and 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 um, inspiration, as I said, and conversation and great questions from you guys in the audience. A lot of good interaction. I'm really glad about that. I'm, I'm hoping this is very helpful and educational and fun for everyone to attend. And I hope you take some of the, these ideas back to your small and rural libraries and um, use them. Uh, the um, we are recorded. Uh, the, all of these sessions are recorded, and I will be starting next week working on editing them that down. Um, each each presentation into its own video. Uh, you don't have to sit through eight hours again later <laughs> to watch the recordings. Each one will be individual. Um, so look for those in the next week or two. Um, you will be receiving an email that will have an evaluation form. We have an evaluation available for you to let us know what you thought of the day um, and information for about continuing education uh, credits uh, for Nebraska libraries. We have a form that we set up specifically for that purpose for applying for CE credits. Um, for other libraries who are not in Nebraska, um, you will receive this email email that will be your confirmation. We don't do actual certificates or things like that, but it's a confirmation that you did attend today that you could use to apply for CE credits from your own state agencies who, who do that. So um, thank you so much. I had a lot of fun today. This is great um, doing this. I'm, uh, um, thank you everyone for attending and I hope you will um, join us next year. Uh, look for, um, usually we've done this at the last week of February, Thursday or Friday, depending on how it falls. And um, I'll say we'll do this again next year. So join us, um, look for the specific date announcement when we nail that down, but look for us um, next February 2017. Thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Bye. Happy week. Happy weekend.